Uh, well, we're excited to rebrand the company. Um, I had uh, been in, uh, involved with the process of the uh, Geneva Wine and Culinary Service uh, Center being renamed or branded as Pairings, and that was pretty intriguing to be part of that process. Uh, then we started to follow press releases in our industry, and a lot of the independent telephone companies, um, we found out were beginning to rebrand to get away from the legacy telephone kind of brands uh, to more of a high-tech um, IT kind of world. And a lot of them just felt like the word telephone in your name was too dated, much like saying pagers or Betamax uh, or VHS. So um, we kind of looked at that. Uh, also looking at the strategic uh, direction of the company, um, several years ago we began building the network outside the area, and now we're a telephone company not only in Conneaut, uh, but also in North Kingsville, um, Ashtabula, Saybrook, Geneva-on-the-Lake, Geneva, Rock Creek, Roaming Shores. Uh, we have fiber optic cables and clients in uh, Jefferson on high-speed internet. So, you know, we really are no longer just Conneaut centric. Um, now, when I say that, some of our local folks, um, you know, are kind of disappointed that we would not be using the Conneaut telephone trade name. Uh, we're still going to be known as that, um, you, and we will use that name to market sometimes. Um, but uh, we we thought that. Uh, you know, a, a cohesive trade name. Uh, right now, we have Kanya Telephone for the dial tone, uh, Suite 224 Internet for broadband internet services, and then Cable Suite 541, which is a mouthful for anything we do with cable TV. And it was really hampering our ability um, to help people understand who we were. Um, we still, you know, are proud of our legacy. We're proud to be in Conneaut. And you may see certain um, marketing tactics that uh, use both trade names together. Um, but we are excited uh, uh, to have a new unified brand that's a little easier to say and a little easier to spell. Okay, um, we started the rebranding process about two and a half years ago uh, using the uh, large marketing firm, national marketing firm, Falgren Mortine. Um, they have a local Cleveland office, so we engaged those folks. They came down and did interviews with our workforce. They did interviews with our board of directors. Um, they surveyed our customers a couple different times, a couple different ways. And what they came out with was the notion that we're more of a community business. Um, we're, our customers value our commitment to service and support and our professional uh, workforce and the quality and innovation of our products. And so they kind of put all that together and boiled that down. And then uh, once we agreed on the identity of the company and you know, really what our culture was, uh, they then went to the dictionary basically to look for root words that uh, would be synonymous with those you know, abstract uh, uh, concepts. And so they presented to us a roster of about 16 different potential names. Some were a little bit more of a reach than others. Um, we then came away, our board of directors had a poll where we selected like six different names that we liked and each was weighted. Uh, out of that, we came away with four different names that we liked. Um, we then sent those on to our attorneys to look at trademark and copyright protection. Uh, the first three were ruled out. Uh, they were already in use and there wasn't a variation that we could use. The fourth was available. So uh, after that we did a large email blast survey of our customers and partners and um, so forth. The other thing is a lot of our technology that we're rolling out outside of the area is based on fiber optic cables and it uses light waves. And we also use radio waves with Wi-Fi and RF waves for cable TV over copper. So we kind of liked that one word wave. Uh, now some people associate it more with the lake for tourism, um, but that wasn't our intent. It was more about the light waves on fiber optics. And so going through the different name permutations, what had come out was great wave. And uh, as a suffix, we looked at a couple of different ways to project who we are. Uh, but it was unanimous that communications was the best way to uh, sum up what the company 
uh, is all about. So that is the new brand, Great Wave. It's all one word, capital G, capital W, Great Wave Communications. So some point this summer, um, we'll start to roll that name out. Uh, the name is decided upon, and we're letting people know about it. Uh, you won't see it in print. You won't see logos probably till June at the earliest, and it may be later than that. You'll start to see all of our bills, our business cards, our vehicles will all change. So the name is decided. We're still in the logo development stage, and our friends at uh, Falger and Mortine are working diligently on that, and we're excited to see uh, what kind of logo artwork they come up with, what the color scheme is. Once we are armed with those, then you'll start to see us do a marketing blitz to announce the name and the, the brand and uh, start helping our customers, our vendors, and the public uh, digest that. The, the way email systems work, um, we won't have to force existing Suite 224 customers to change their domain name. Now, there will come a time in the future where it will be wise to do so. Um, already, we recommend to our users that you know they use an independent uh, free mail service like Hotmail or Gmail uh, because those are free mailboxes. And then if you move geographically or uh, want to change your username that you log in with, uh, you don't have to change that email address. That's, that remains relatively static really for your entire life provided those companies exist. So no, uh, with the mail system, if you currently like my email is kjohnson at sweet224.net, um, what we're able to do is we layer on multiple domain names. So actually, if you sent me email kjohnson at cablesuite541.com, that still comes to my inbox. If you send it to kjohnson at kaniatelephone.com, that still goes to my inbox. So our mail system is known by dozens of different domain names. Uh, some of those are our customer domain names. So we'll just add Great Wave to the mix, and then if somebody sends it to K Johnson at Great Wave Communications or whatever the domain suffix is, um, that will get to my inbox. Um, so it really won't matter which one. I mean, really, the year 2014 is 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 a modern of uh, modernization. Uh, effort for the company. It's kind of a watershed year where we now offer telephone services outside the area. We offer new business IP solutions. We now have lit our fiber optic network outside the area and are looking to build that out. Um, now we can go into an Ashtabula or a Geneva and sell you cable TV local telephone service and you can keep your existing phone number and we can give you the highest speed internet service there is. Uh, for our folks in our home market of Conneaut, uh, we're also upgrading our cable TV system to all digital so that we can add a ton of new high definition, add video on demand. Uh, we're looking to add TV everywhere service so you can watch cable on like your iPad or your smartphone. Um, and then also our cable modem system, high speed internet, we're about a week away from uh, turning up a major upgrade there that later in the year will allow us to increase speeds by eight times uh, without any, any equipment. We needed to lower the confusion quotient, you know, because uh, we wrestle with it in Conneaut is, uh, you know, I'll go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm with Cable Suite 541. We'd love to have your cable TV business. And then the resident will tell me, no, no, I'm with Conneaut Telephone and I love them. And you just want to <laughs> slap your forehead and say, no, no, that's the same company. That's us. So this will help alleviate that confusion. So it was very important for us to work on this ahead of this major push outside the markets. The local people are very proud of the legacy of this company, as are uh, those of us that are you know, involved in the, the management of the company. Um, so it's a difficult thing to leave that. I mean, it myself, actually, I was going to say this earlier, but uh, I was kind of holding on to the notion that we might keep Conneaut Telephone through the rebranding process or maybe change it to Conneaut Communications. But uh, last summer, I got a lot of correspondence from the shareholders and the, the owners of the company who uh, felt like the name was outdated and was making them nervous. So that helped you know, really push us along to speed up the process. Um, but as we look at the feedback, um, while the Conneaut telephone name will help the locals feel connected and cement the legacy, uh, at the end of the day, we are a for-profit corporation, and we have to think in the best interest of both our shareholders and our customers. And having a new modernized brand that reflects our high-tech 
uh, really it's time. And again, it's not like we're pioneering this thought. Um, every week I see another press release from another small company that has rebranded away from being the local telephone company into a high-tech IT shop. Uh, you know, I'm very thankful that the company has local residents that even care that we're rebranding because that, I think that would be the biggest insult is if we were changing the name of the company and nobody cared. As, as far as us operating outside the market and you know our impact inside of Connie, I mean, since we launched, uh, well, when we launched in 2001, the cable company actually came out and lowered their rates. And then I think if you track the Conneaut cable TV rates to those, say, in Ashtabula or Geneva, typically they're, they're close to 50% more expensive than we are in Conneaut, and that's because of the competition. So there are a couple of factors that are drawing us outside the Conneaut area. One is, and people have to understand this, is in 1996, uh, laws were changed that took local telephone from being a monopoly system to a uh, competitive system. And at that point, we began aggressively laying the foundation. My predecessor, Tom Picard, uh, set the foundation that the company needs to expand beyond our service territory because it's, it, the math doesn't work if you figure you're going to have a competitor come in. And even if they're remotely successful, take 20% of your market, well, you're going to lose 20% of your market. So now how are you going to make that up? Can you do it just by cuts? Well, in a small town, you just can't do that. And about that time, we started to get strong demand for our dial-up internet service. We got strong demand for IT consulting services. So it became a natural that we would take our fiber optic cables. We could do you know, bulk internet to business. We could do business phone uh, service. And then also we could do residential telephone internet cable. And so that really made a lot of sense. Um, we had the know-how, we had the people, the technology. Uh, so we began down that road, and uh, you know it's really good that we did. I think, you know, between people taking cell phones and getting rid of landlines for their home, uh, or whether it's you know competitors in the marketplace, uh, you know we've seen a significant erosion of the landlines. And for us to survive for the next generation, we needed to have a, a bigger geography to do business.